It's two o'clock in Central Europe. So we can start with the new episode of the Yellow Webinars. Today, we're going, we're going to listen to our colleague Gianluca Tell. Gianluca is full professor of molecular biology at the University of Trieste, of Udine, sorry for that. Uh, and in addition to be an outstanding scientist, Gianluca has been, is, and will be an absolutely uh, uh, reliable uh, cooperator with us. With Gianluca, we are sharing different projects. Uh, we have shared different uh, papers, but the reason why uh, Gianluca uh, has been asked to deliver this seminar, because Gianluca is known to be one of the leading scientists in the world on RNA processing and DNA repair. The title of the talk Gianluca will give us today is Crosstalk Between RNA Processing and DNA Repair in Cancer Development. Gianluca, please. So thank you very much, Claudio, uh, for this kind of invitation and uh, for giving me the opportunity uh, to present uh, uh, some of the uh, recent works uh, uh, on my lab, performed in my lab, uh, in uh, this uh, new uh, field that is the crosstalk between uh, transcription and DNA repair. Uh, can you can you see the, the slide, right? Okay, so yes. Okay, thank you. So um, uh, DNA damage may come from different sources, uh, and uh, such as uh, endogenous sources, such as uh, oxidative stress, uh, uh, due to um, uh, common cellular metabolism, but also. Uh, by exogenous uh, and uh, other endogenous uh, uh, issues uh, uh, that can give light uh, to chemical modifications uh, of uh, DNA that can be uh, highly harmful for the cell. It is considered that the number of DNA damaging events uh, per uh, human cell per day is, is uh, very high, is about 10 to the 4, 10 to the 6 uh, lesion per day. That uh, if you consider the number of uh, eukaryotic cells in an adult human organism, that is uh, about 10 to the 14, gives rise to a uh, absolutely high number of uh, reparative events needed per day uh, for uh, an adult uh, human. Despite that, the number of experimental mutation that the cell uh, is able to fix uh, for each cell cycle is uh, very low and is estimated to be two to four mutation per cell cycle uh, of a proliferating cell. This is essentially due by the fact that uh, there are many efficient uh, DNA repair pathways uh, that are able to specifically um, recognize the lesion and repair efficiently the lesion itself. In this slide, uh, five major DNA repair pathways are uh, represented with the, the major enzymes involved uh, in the repair of the lesion itself. And uh, every uh, DNA repair pathway is uh, responsible for the specific recognition of the lesion generated by exogenous and endogenous sources and uh, specifically uh, respond to the lesion uh, using uh, uh, generally the um, integer filament uh, to repair the lesion itself. A specific, uh, um, so a specificity is one of the major uh, characteristic of DNA repair pathway. And uh, the other characteristic is that there are some lesions that can be repaired by different pathways uh, uh, in combination, such as for instance, single strand breaks that can lead to double strand breaks can be repaired not only by base excision repair, but also by homologous and combination and non-homologous and joining. Therefore, there is some kind of complementarity 
in the uh, um, function of these uh, DNA repair pathways in order to assure the high fidelity that is required to keep uh, DNA uh, uh, as it stands. On the other side, RNA is uh, uh, even more susceptible to DNA to, to um, lesions such as oxidative lesion than DNA. Uh, the, the, the main uh, reason is that uh, uh, RNA is uh, present not only in the nucleus, but also in the cytoplasm. There is a huge amount of RNA uh, present in the cytoplasm of cells. It is usually uh, not uh, uh, folded in uh, chromatin as a DNA, not folding in uh, uh, nucleosomes, and therefore is more exposed to the possibility of chemical modifications. And uh, in fact, uh, uh, many uh, lesions on, on RNA, such as it, uh, it, uh, hydroxyguanosine, 5-hydroxycytidine, 5 hydroxyuridine 8 hydroxyadenosine have been identified in oxidized RNA, as well as the generation of a basic sites on RNA, which occurs upon oxidation and alkylations. Of course, uh, if not repair these damages, which cause altered repair, may lead to ribosomal dysfunction and erroneous translation process, thus significantly affecting the oral protein synthesis mechanism. An interesting uh, finding is that uh, oxidation of RNA can uh, be uh, also a regulatory mechanism uh, through which uh, some regulatory non-coding RNA, such as microRNA, can change uh, the gene target. This is because essentially a doxoguanin is able to pair not more with uh, cytosine, but uh, with adenine. Therefore, this leading to mismatches uh, in the possibility that uh, one microRNA that is oxidized can change the original gene target of that microRNA. Despite the fact that uh, this modification in RNA plays uh, so huge uh, uh, effects in the cells, uh, it is quite uh, interesting to know that uh, our knowledge on the, what happens to RNA upon oxidation is still scanty. And uh, the number of uh, proteins that are uh, known to have to cope with the damaged RNA uh, able to, um, for instance, degrade damaged RNA or to repair RNA is very scanty. Um, what we know actually uh, in coping with the homeostasis of RNA is basically due to the general mechanism, molecular mechanism responsible for the guarantee the RNA homeostasis in uh, mammalian cells. So there are some uh, nonsense mediated decay pathways through which uh, RNA containing, mutated RNA containing, uh, for instance, uh, um, stop codons can be, uh, um, can be degraded in the cytoplasm to avoid erroneous protein translation. But uh, in general, it is not known what uh, uh, is uh, the, the final outcome of uh, uh, oxidation of RNA, the presence of a basic RNA, and whether there are enzymatic uh, uh, mechanisms responsible for recognition and repair or degrade this kind of modified RNA. Despite the fact that uh, on the DNA, uh, DNA field, there are about uh, more than 500 proteins uh, uh, identified uh, to uh, repair uh, damaged DNA. What is uh, coming to light actually in uh, literature is that uh, there is a connection between DNA and RNA surveillance mechanisms in uh, mammalian cells. And now we are um, 
just started to open a, um, a kind of uh, Pandora bag in which uh, we are trying to understand what are the mechanisms responsible for a recognition of specific lesion on RNA and what is uh, uh, the mechanism responsible for its eventual degradation or its eventual uh, repair. And what is coming to light is that uh, a number of DNA repair proteins uh, uh, participate in RNA quality control in its turnover on its processing. What I will try to uh, 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 show you uh, to, to convince you is that uh, some uh, uh, enzymes, and in particular, a main enzyme which uh, uh, is studied in my lab uh, since uh, uh, 1998, uh, APE1, is one of these main enzymes responsible for the processing of oxidized RNA and on uh, RNA, uh, which present uh, uh, a basic size. If one uh, is uh, a protein belonging to the basic scission repair uh, pathway of DNA lesions, uh, which is responsible for the repair originally on DNA of damages uh, uh, at the single basis due to oxidative stress, to alkylating agents using chemotherapy such as timozolomide, but also to other uh, chemotherapy agents uh, such as uh, some radiomimetics such as bleomycin or uh, 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 platin salts uh, or uh, inhibitors uh, of topoisomerase, we generate single strand breaks. And essentially, APE1 <coughs> is a acts uh, upon the action of uh, uh, an upstream enzyme, family of enzymes, which are the glycosylases, which are responsible for the recognition of the uh, lesion to the base, generate after hydrolysis of the uh, nucleo bond uh, between uh, the base and the sugar and a basic site, and then the abasic site is a substrate for F1. And uh, the protein is able to cleave uh, the phosphodiester backbone at the five prime of the abasic site, generates a nick with the uh, deoxyribose phosphase, uh, with, of course, uh, containing the abasic site, which is then acted by polymerase beta which uh, removes the deoxyribose phosphate with a, uh, a basic and uh, fills in the gap uh, by polymerase uh, activity. What is uh, striking here is that, uh, and what is, uh, this is, uh, the, these uh, findings were the one from which we started uh, more than 20 years ago, reflecting on this uh, uh, particular protein, the fact that, uh, the intermediate generated by this enzyme is even more toxic than the, the oxidative lesion that uh, uh, the whole uh, uh, pathway is responsible to repair. And the other observation was that uh, uh, the protein is, uh, is highly uh, abundant in the cells. We calculated, we measured the protein copies present in mammalian cells and uh, uh, is an extremely high number, two to four order of magnitude more abundant than all other bad oxygen repair enzymes. This means that if uh, the proteins is uh, more abundant, there is a, a possibility, a dangerous possibility that uh, we have an accumulation of this toxic lesion if uh, there is no coordination of, between the enzymes of the pathway and the extent uh, of the damages that uh, must be coped by the pathway itself. Uh, from uh, this observation, uh, we uh, also contributed uh, in, together with uh, some other colleagues uh, uh, in the US to determine 
the structural function of, uh, of the proteins. And uh, uh, this is uh, uh, a cartoon showing uh, how the proteins uh, behaves uh, on a basic DNA. And this is uh, <clears throat> the basic site that is uh, the substrate for this protein. Uh, and you can see that the protein is able to recognize the basic site um, through a flipping out mechanism, thus uh, uh, it being able to sculpture the DNA in order to recognize the, uh, the abasic site itself. What we found also is that the ability of the protein to recognize uh, nucleic acids depend also not only on the presence of the abasic site, but also on the presence of secondary structure. This is important for what we, I will tell you later. We characterize the, the structural features important uh, uh, for a nucleic, nucleic acid to be uh, bound uh, uh, with high affinity by the protein. And beside the, the, the basic site, as I mentioned, the presence of a double-stranded region, the occurrence of a single-stranding local distortion, and the present, uh, presence of a loop or a bulge in a double-stranded uh, stranded, uh, uh, nucleic acid, DNA on RNA, was essential in uh, characterizing and in promoting an high affinity binding of the protein to the substrate. This is important for what I will tell you later. Other important issues that uh, <clears throat> also prompted us uh, to think uh, on this protein uh, from a different perspective is, uh, comes from the, its uh, biological relevance because uh, uh, it's a vital protein. The uh, ape one knockout is a periodic uh, lethal. And uh, uh, as also uh, upon the, uh, after the DNA repair or together with the DNA repair, also some non-DNA repair uh, roles, uh, in particular in transcriptional regulation of uh, several genes involved in inflammatory response, for instance, or in, in proliferation, such as, for instance, NFKB or AP1 or uh, if one alpha is uh, involved in intracellular regdoc homeostasis and, uh, as I will show you, is involved in RNA metabolism. Regarding uh, the involvement of this protein in cancer development, there are some uh, conflicting reports uh, on the association of AP1 or some AP1 polymorphic variants with human cancer. But what we found during the years in the, is that in many issues, in many situations, there is a, an aberrant subcellular localization of the protein, which correlates with tumor differentiation and aggressiveness, and in particular, not only nuclear, but also cytoplasmic localization of, of the protein can be observed. And generally, that uh, overexpression is associated with the chemo and radio resistant on, on tumors. Uh, two different kind of um, uh, chemotherapy regimens, such as alkylating regions or radiomimetics. Uh, we also uh, studying with uh, Claudio and with uh, Davis uh, in, during the years, uh, the expression of IP1 uh, in hepatocellular carcinoma, we can find that uh, the, in hepatocellular carcinoma, the protein is slightly expressed uh, and there are uh, some uh, features some uh, uh, cases of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma in which the protein is uh, mainly cytoplasmic. There is an accumulation of the protein in the cytoplasmic compartment uh, of uh, hepatocellular carcinoma tissue. And uh, this uh, cytoplasmic expression is a good prognostic marker uh, as uh, measured by this Kaplan-Meier representation, which shows a, a significantly poorer survival of patients having cytoplasmic distribution of the protein. For this reason, of course, in the, the I would say in the last 20 years, the protein is a, an important uh, target in cancer therapy, uh, in which uh, several kinds of inhibitors have been trying to develop uh, those uh, uh, interfering with uh, the endonuclease activity of the protein, but also with the redox activity of the protein itself. 
The, pro the problems with uh, this uh, um, inhibitor, with this strategy, is that the fact that the two activities are present not only in cancer cells, but also in normal cells. Therefore, therefore, there is a problem of specificity of these kind of, of treatments. So in the years, uh, we tried uh, to study the double phase uh, uh, function of the proteins uh, in uh, maintenance of genome stability from one side and the other side in controlling gene expression uh, associated with cell proliferation, adaptive cellular mechanism to genotoxic stress, and therefore tumor progression and chemo resistance. And uh, to study these uh, uh, um, the, what, what were the mechanisms responsible for this uh, double phase uh, uh, behavior of the protein, the best way is to use an unbiased strategies. And uh, through unbiased strategies, we try to, uh, uh, to, to target or uh, to focus to different uh, kind of problems, uh, to identify and study the biological impact of post-translational modification on the protein on different functions, and to identify and study the protein-protein and protein-nucleic acid interaction networks of the protein. To do this, uh, we developed a, a, a cell model in a cell initially, in which uh, uh, through a specific uh, and constitutive expressing uh, plasmid uh, coding for uh, SH uh, RNA targeting the protein, we were able to inducibly, uh, th these, uh, these constructs are uh, uh, induced by doxycycline treatment, uh, to inducibly deplete the cells of the endogenous protein. And then by expressing a flag tag form of the protein, we were able to reconstitute the cell with a flag tag version of the protein in order to have a similar amount of, of endogenous, of ectopic pro protein that with respect to the endogenous one with a flag tag in order to isolate uh, protein and RNA complex and nucleic acid complex uh, <laughs> with the one itself. Through this uh, model, we identified uh, several new uh, acetylate post-translational modifications, such as uh, acetylation occurring in leasing 27 to 35 uh, here in the uh, non-structure and terminal domain of the protein. We identified uh, a proteolysis occurring on uh, at the level of these residues. <coughs> which is inhibited by acetylation. And the proteolysis uh, could uh, give rise to a truncated form of the protein uh, um, devoid of the nuclear localization signal, which is responsible for the cytoplasmic localization of the protein uh, due to the loss of this nuclear localization signal. Interestingly, but this uh, and terminal domain, uh, which bears uh, a significant number of translational modification, is also another important feature that is uh, the, to be in an unfolded uh, structure, is uh, um, an unfolded uh, domain, or is the only of the main unfolded domain of the protein. And uh, um, this is uh, the first feature. The second feature is that uh, the characteristic with this uh, and terminal domain uh, is uh, uh, render the protein prone to be uh, highly predicted for liquid-liquid phase separation, which is important for the things that I will uh, tell you later. <clears throat> then using this kind of, of model, sorry, I have to, to drink something because I have a cough. <clears throat> We were able, uh, using uh, unbiased strategies through um, functional proteomics uh, using uh, mass spec analysis with isolated uh, ape one protein complexes and identified uh, the protein protein interactum of ape one. And through bioinformatic analysis, uh, we uh, identify uh, through functional enrichment analysis, for instance, but also. 
uh, studying uh, uh, the expression of um, uh, the protein protein interactome uh, and uh, in, in TCGA data analysis, we found uh, quite interesting things. And in fact, uh, what we found is that um, making a, a correlation uh, 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 analysis uh, with the AP1 protein protein interactome uh, in uh, uh, using different data sets from uh, TCGA data sets uh, that are <coughs> data set <coughs> of cancer gene expression analysis. We, what we found is that uh, there are almost 90% of the AP1 protein protein interactome network uh, is associated with the bad prognosis when performing survival analysis in real cancer data set, suggested that indeed the AP1 with, with its protein partner can be used at, as a, a prognostic signature uh, in terms of uh, uh, functional use of these. Uh, of these findings uh, in uh, uh, as a prognostic mm -hmm. factor in cancer. Uh, we actually, the protein protein one protein protein interactome comprises uh, several hundred of uh, proteins, but the most interesting proteins are those depicted in this uh, slide. And of course, we have uh, uh, proteins in yellow the, involved in the base excision repair pathway as expected. Uh, but uh, interestingly, what we found is that a number of protein interactions with AP1, and they are in green and in pink, in particular in green, are proteins involved in RNA metabolism. While in pink, you can see a number of proteins that are uh, involved in extracellular vesicle secretion mechanism, which is another uh, point that I will discuss to you later. So with uh, one of these proteins uh, is uh, of this uh, RNA uh, processing uh, protein is nucleophosphamide. The nucleophosphamide is a nucleolar resident protein is responsible for the maturation of ribosomal RNA in the nucleolus. Uh, what we found is depicted in this model uh, in which uh, we, uh, in normal condition, we um, we can see that AP1 is basically present in the nucleus and is accumulated in nucleoli associated with nucleophosmine. And then after genotoxic stress, uh, that gives rise to acetylation of releasing residue present in the N-terminal domain, the protein uh, is uh, uh, relocalized from a, the nucleolus to the nucleoplasma, giving rise uh, or modulating uh, its uh, endonuclease activity. Thus, uh, we believe that this is a mechanism through which the base excision repair pathway can be activated uh, upon damage. But uh, uh, in under condition in which uh, uh, acetylation is removed, uh, the protein uh, changes its, its substrate from DNA to RNA. And, and in this condition, the protein is able to cleave a basic and oxidized RNA, therefore being involved in RNA degradation and quality control, leading to the control of protein synthesis and cell proliferation. This accumulation of the protein uh, in, uh, I'm sorry, the accumulation of the protein uh, in, uh, um, I'm sorry, uh, okay, in the nucleolus uh, uh, depends strictly on the uh, active uh, uh, transcription of uh, RNA, uh, ribosomal RNA genes, because uh, this is a movie, unfortunately, it doesn't work, uh, but uh, you can see that. Uh, you would see that uh, up, if you treat the cells with the pol one inhibitor, you have a significant relocalization of the protein from the nucleolus to the nuclei. Therefore, uh, this uh, active retention of the protein in the nucleoli depends on uh, ribosomal genes uh, active transcription. Uh, recently also, we demonstrated that uh, AP1 interacts with the nuclear exosome complex responsible for the RNA degradation 
of damaged RNA, and in particular upon uh, treatment of the cells uh, with the cisplatin and for a uracil, thus providing the first uh, evidence for it is involved uh, in the nuclear exosome degradation of damaged RNA can play a role in the control of quality of uh, ribosomal RNA also within the nuclei. But uh, uh, based on what I've, I've told you before about uh, the ability of the proteins to uh, recognize uh, uh, structured nucleic acids, uh, we concentrated our efforts uh, in the, the study of the relationship between AP1 and uh, some microRNA, because microRNA are non-coding RNA, which are transcribed uh, in the nucleus by RNA pol 2 or pol 3 in the pre-micro RNA form that is mature within the nucleus uh, by the action of complex of enzymes such as uh, drosia uh, in the pre-microRNA pre form. And then in this form, it is exported in the nucleus, whether when and um, where uh, after it is exported from the nucleus to the cytoplasm, and in the cytoplasm, upon the action of other enzyme compounds such as Dicer and Argonaut, and uh, the formation of the risk complex is able the mature RNA to perform uh, a post transcriptional regulation of gene expression, thus leading to RNA cleavage, translation and repletion, or mRNA uh, deadenylation. So these microRNA, which are long, uh, about 20 to 22 nucleotides, derive from longer micro, uh, pre microRNA, long uh, about 200 nucleotides. But what is important to note is that uh, in the majority of the time required for the maturation of this microRNA, the nucleic acid is in the uh, structure conformation, which is the ideal platform for ap one binding. And since we, as I mentioned, demonstrated that ap one preferentially processes a basic double strengthening structure RNA, we asked whether there is a role, there was a role in AP, of ap one in controlling gene expression through microRNA processing. This is important because microRNA can act as onco-microRNA uh, or tumor suppresses microRNA, modulating cancer cell uh, development uh, and therefore important for tumor progression. So using the same method that I mentioned, the same model that I mentioned before, we identify through nanostring analysis uh, microRNA uh, whose expression was affected by the expression of AP1. And we found uh, about uh, <coughs> 55 microRNA down regulated in AP1 knockdown cells. And some, <coughs> well, less of them, 26, uh, were upregulated. Uh, uh, and uh, some of them are also associated with. Uh, um, H2O2 treatment of the cell. In particular, we concentrated on, on sun microRNA, such as microRNA 21-22. But what is important to note is that a functional gene ontology analysis demonstrated that indeed this microRNA regulated by A1 plays a significant role, again, in cancer development. So to cut the long story short, what we identified in this paper uh, of six years ago is that AP1 is able to perform quality control of uh, pre-microRNA uh, damaged by oxidative stress uh, or uh, and thus generating a doxoguanin or a basic sign that we were able to measure in the in the in the nucleus, uh, thus targeting this prime microRNA in the nuclear exosome for degradation, and therefore we per, uh, we suggested that if one can't act as an hub in microRNA processing event involved uh, in cancer biology. In this first study, we studied the uh, the, the activity of if one with regard to this function, with uh, uh, looking at uh, these two microRNA, 221 and 222, which are 
oncomicronna-regulated P10 expression, which is important for the activation of AKT, which is required for tumor cell proliferation. Therefore, suggesting that maybe one of the main mechanisms through which uh, APE1 <coughs> can exert its uh, tumor uh, progression function is uh, could be through microRNA and through indirect uh, gene transcription regulation. So our model uh, on which uh, we try to uh, collect additional data is that uh, if one uh, can perform uh, uh, its activity in uh, uh, tumor regulation through the uh, gene to modulating uh, microRNA expression and thus gene targeting effects. And one of the most important gene target uh, that we identified was uh, P10. Uh, more recently, we just published this uh, paper uh, a few months ago, we um, extended this observation in another model of uh, cancer um, development, which is uh, the uh, no small cell lung cancer. And by using A549 cells, which is a good model for studying this, and using nanostring and RNA seq analysis in A1 in depleted cells, we identified a signature of 12 microRNA, which are significantly affected by A1 expression. This signature is a good prognostic. Uh, as a good prognostic value in uh, uh, lung carcinoma uh, affected patient as demonstrated by TCGA analysis. And what we found, we identified, is we identified also uh, the gene targets which are uh, representing this slide of this uh, signature of microRNA point to, to DICER as one of the hubs genes uh, regulating uh, uh, regulated by microRNA affected by APE1 uh, expression, and the number of other genes involved in epidermal mesenchymal transition. Therefore, we, we demonstrate in this paper that uh, the function uh, of the regulatory role of APE1 uh, suggested uh, a few year, years ago by a Chinese group uh, uh, as a main uh, uh, determiners in the uh, TKI responsiveness in no small cell lung cancer associated with the uh, epithelium to mesenchymal transition can be exerted to a post transcriptional mechanism involving microRNA and different target genes. Not only microRNA are affected by A1, what we found is that using uh, uh, RNA immunoprecipitation, we identified <coughs> classes, different classes of RNA interacted with A1, and in particular, <laughs> looking in, at non uh, microRNA RNA, we identified about uh, 1,000 RNA um, uh, corresponding to uh, protein coding genes. Uh, and uh, others, uh, long non coding RNA, which are actually under uh, evaluation. Therefore, uh, we can uh, um, suggest uh, that uh, uh, A1 um, is uh, affecting uh, RNA trafficking or RNA processing event through many mechanisms, but uh, the, 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 the role through um, direct binding and processing RNA is one of the main roles. Okay, so uh, to, to sum up this part uh, uh, and coming back to our uh, first question, uh, so the, the uh, two-phase uh, role of AIP1 uh, in uh, cell proliferation and genotoxic response and chemo resistance tumor progression uh, can be regulated uh, by proselytizational modification, subcellular localization, and changes in uh, uh, protein and RNA interactons. Therefore, we believe that uh, these new findings of these DNA proteins in RNA and microRNA processing decay could explain uh, the function of the protein, the non-DNA-related 
function of the protein, which is mainly involved uh, in the maintenance of genome stability. Um, one other important uh, finding that we observe is that uh, the protein can be secreted. Uh, as I mentioned, the protein is highly expressed in hepatocellular carcinoma, as we demonstrated uh, again with, uh, with Claudio and Davis in the, in the last year. And uh, we found that uh, the expression of the protein at the tissue level uh, is significantly higher in hepatocellular carcinoma with respect to surrounding liver carcin cancer and, uh, of course, with normal control. Not only, but that the fact that the protein can be secreted in sera of patients. And uh, the levels uh, of protein which can be secreted in the, in the uh, the sera of patient well correlates with expression level that can be found in the tissue. And uh, we suggested that uh, the measurement of the serum levels of the protein in hepatocellular carcinoma can be used as a, an, as a biomarker uh, for hepatocellular carcinoma prognosis because it's able to significantly uh, discriminate uh, not only cancer versus healthy patient, but also cancer versus cirrhotic patients. On the fact that the protein can be released, we are actually studying this issue. And uh, what we found is that uh, uh, tumor cells <coughs> are able to release the protein through extracellular vesicles, including exosomes. And in particular, what we found is that uh, upon treatment of the cells with different genotoxic uh, agents, such as cisplatin or doxorubicin, we have an increase in the, in the release of the protein, and in particular, also the protein uh, bearing uh, the truncation and uh, uh, the lysine residues, which can be also uh, acetylated, as I mentioned before. Of course, we have to characterize the mechanism responsible for this uh, secretion. We have now actually a paper under review in JBC showing uh, the roots, the intercellular roots followed up by the protein in the composition of the extracellular vesicle, uh, which contains the protein. Interestingly, um, uh, between the base excision repair proteins, uh, AP1 is the only one that can be released uh, through exosomes. So the meaning of this release is actually not known. We know that uh, in the exosome, the, proteins, uh, the protein is enzymatically active, but in the exosome, the, the base excision repair pathway is not active. Therefore, we believe that this uh, uh, exosomal secretion can be associated with its function, the function of the protein with RNA quality control, because uh, several microRNA can be also released uh, through the same routes uh, followed by A1. And along these lines, we uh, uh, made another experiment. Uh, we characterized the, the microRNA profile of exosomes from cells expressing and non-expressing AP1 in order to check whether AP1, uh, loss of AP1 by cancer cell can affect uh, the repertoire of microRNA that are released by this cancer cell. And unsuspectedly, this is a manuscript that we are planning to, to, to send out within the next months, uh, is that uh, there are uh, specific uh, uh, features of microRNA, specific uh, microRNA that can be affected by the, by in, in by AP1 depletion in the sorting mechanism. The sorting of microRNA is uh, uh, quite uh, emerging uh, an interesting field of uh, of um, uh, microRNA biology, and there are. Some, uh, uh, some things that are known, but the majority of the things uh, responsible for sorting of microRNA within extracellular vesicle is not known. But what we found is that uh, this microRNA that we found is regulated upon AP1 depletion in their present within the exosome 
per specific consensus binding site eh, that are G rich or C rich. And in particular, we focused them on one microRNA, which is the 1246. And we see that uh, the, uh, we, of course, confirmed that uh, uh, this uh, microRNA is significantly affected in its release upon ape one uh, knockdown. And interestingly, this microRNA is a model microRNA for uh, exosomal uh, studies because uh, it bears a consensus binding site for a protein, a, a, a heterogeneous nuclear ribonucleoprotein called A2P1, which is one of the few uh, ribonucleoproteins uh, known to be responsible for the sorting of microRNA within exosomes. What we found is that uh, uh, ape one is able to interact uh, with uh, uh, these uh, uh, ribonucleoproteins. Therefore, we think that there is a complex between this protein and ape one which is responsible for the uh, sorting of specific microRNA bearing the consensus binding site for A2P1 in association with uh, the presence of ape one within uh, the uh, ex exosome. And uh, actually, we measured the, the binding ability of ape one toward this microRNA. We, we found, of course, that the protein is able to bind to this microRNA. And this binding requires the N terminal domain. And in fact, in the deletion form of the uh, N terminal domain of ape one, we lose this interaction. And also, uh, we uh, perform the screening assay in order to identify um, uh, small compounds able to impair the interaction with uh, uh, this microRNA with A2B1. And we found some uh, A2B1 inhibitors complex uh, 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 um, molecules. And uh, what we found is that uh, these inhibitors are able to. Uh, impair or to inhibit also the interaction of ape one with the, the microRNA itself. Therefore, we are opening a new field in the possibility of uh, using this kind of inhibitor to block selectively the sorting of specific microRNA by impairing the interaction uh, of this microRNA with the sorting proteins such as A2B1 and, Pol1, and, and ape one. So our working model actually in this kind of a field is that uh, uh, cancer cells that can uh, become uh, resistant to genotoxic treatment are able uh, to uh, secrete uh, complex uh, between ape one and specific microRNA that can be uptaken by recipient cells uh, uh, to exert uh, uh, similar uh, function and uh, uh, promoted the onset uh, of uh, uh, resistance uh, in a paracrine mechanism. Of course, uh, this is a provocative, uh, um, a provocative uh, uh, cartoon, which are actually trying to better circumstantiate uh, and generalize uh, uh, also using some uh, in vitro, other in vitro and in vivo models. So I hope I have convinced you that uh, with the, our studies, uh, we are able to put uh, ape one uh, at the crossroad between DNA damage and repair and RNA processing and uh, uh, decay uh, through different uh, mechanisms. Some of them are more clear, some uh, we are trying uh, to better circumstantiate, in particular, the role of AP1 in uh, the quality control of uh, microRNA and uh, the possible uh, importance of uh, other enzymes. So uh, uh, I want to, to use uh, some few minutes to conclude uh, my presentation. And uh, I, there are some still open question in the fact that uh, many uh, basic excision repair and, and DNA damage repair enzymes are catalytically active on many different RNA substrates. The question is whether their function linked to RNA process decay uh, or whether they are involved uh, in RNA editing processes. For instance, 
methylation or the methylation of specific uh, RNA. Um, this will be quite important uh, uh, also for additional roles, uh, regulatory roles of RNA. And uh, with uh, our studies, uh, uh, one uh, still que open question is uh, to ponder the emerging evidence about the relevance of this non-canonical function of uh, DDR and bear enzymes in RNA biologies, because uh, in this way, we think we should reinterpret their biological roles in cancer and neurodegenerative diseases. And we believe that this uh, new function uh, will uh, help us uh, in uh, uh, the development of uh, new, more specific uh, inhibitors of these uh, functions, which are altered in tumors, but maybe they could be altered also in other neurodegenerative diseases because we think that in this way, we could develop uh, uh, this uh, uh, specific inhibitor for more uh, proper therapeutic goals uh, uh, based on these more specific functions. Okay, so I will go, I will leave uh, this part, uh, but uh, we'll conclude, we'd like to conclude uh, uh, by thanking, uh, of course, uh, uh, all the, the people worked uh, on uh, in my lab uh, in the, uh, the, the last years. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, actually my group, uh, uh, also a number of collaborators all throughout the world uh, that contributed to these uh, understandings. Uh, and also I would like to thank uh, these two PhD students, Monica De Grassi and Giuseppe Dallagnese, which are uh, actually uh, working uh, on the last uh, thing uh, that I showed you. In particular, uh, in the, uh, Monica is working on the uh, characterized interaction of IP1 with uh, the microRNA 1246. So we have actually a crystallographic structure that should be performed, uh, that should be obtained uh, soon. And Giuseppe, which is uh, actually working the MIT in Boston uh, uh, and uh, uh, trying to demo to, to show and to study another important uh, aspect uh, of ape one uh, biology, that is the possibility that the protein makes uh, uh, condensate within cells, uh, one of, of the condensate uh, that I mentioned is the nucleolus uh, through liquid-liquid uh, uh, separation mechanism. It is a quite a novel field uh, of study in uh, molecular biology, and uh, that could also open a new interesting perspective uh, in uh, uh, cancer studies. So I thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and I hope that, that uh, I would be able to leave you some uh, uh, important uh, messages. Uh, and uh, uh, also, I want to leave with uh, this sentence from this uh, explorer, uh, the US explorer and writer, which is, I, uh, is uh, synthesized quite well uh, from uh, what I started uh, about 30 years ago in the study of this protein and uh, uh, the, what uh, we, uh, we are now. And we are now uh, trying to, uh, we have a collective answer to question uh, I never thought to ask. And thank you all guys uh, for attention. And I, I am here to take your question. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Gianluca. That was an excellent presentation. Very exciting and very, I mean, very useful to keep your brain active because it's, it's very hard to follow some complicated pathways. 